Hello everybody, I finally had a chance to see Oculus, and I know I'm a bit late to the party on this one, but I didn't have a chance to see it opening weekend. I wanted to, because a friend of mine saw it and really liked it and recommended it, but didn't have time until a few days ago. But now that I've seen it, and now that I have a chance to talk about it, this was pretty damn good, actually. Um, which kind of surprised me, considering the first thing I saw when this... Uh, movie started playing was the logo for WWE Studios. And yes, that WWE. And no, this movie isn't about wrestling in any way, shape, or form. Uh, it's just that they started their own film studio years ago and for the most part have just been making a bunch of craptastic, low-budget films starring their wrestlers. And they've been varying degrees of laughably bad. And I'll probably end up reviewing one of them at some point on the show. Uh, but yeah, l lately they have actually attempted to branch out a bit, and, you know, if Oculus is a sign of things to come, WWE Studios could be a decent player in Hollywood in the future. I can't believe I just said that, but there it is. But anyway, uh, Oculus, the story. The uh, story focuses on... Uh, Tim and Kaylee Russell, who went through a very traumatic experience during their childhood. Um, they basically witnessed their parents go crazy and kill each other. And naturally, an event like that is going to leave some psychological scars on a child. And in fact, uh, while Kaylee was simply sent into foster care, Tim ended up spending the better part of his childhood in a, in a mental asylum. And was finally let out at the age of 20... Um, after being declared legally sane and finally learning the truth of what happened, because for a while he was convinced that an antique mirror that his father purchased and hung in his home office was haunted and some evil spirit inside that mirror drove his parents crazy and forced them to kill each other. But eventually he learned that this was just his, you know, his fractured little child mind that was playing tricks on him. And in fact, what really happened is his father was having an affair. Mom caught him. She went a little nuts. Their conversation got physical. He ended up killing her and then killed himself. So now that he's finally sane and can be let out, he is reunited with his sister and is very surprised to discover that she still believes it was the evil haunted mirror that killed them. Not only that, but she intends to prove it. She has found the mirror through a series of auctions and has set it up in their old parents' home with various cameras and microphones and whatnot and intends to capture video evidence that proves it's haunted in order to clear their family's name. And they also hope to kill whatever is lurking inside that mirror. And at first, Tim is skeptical because he's just spent the last few years of his life trying to, you know fix his mental instability and, you know, stop all this insanity about a mirror killing everyone. And even though Kaylee has a fair amount of evidence in her favor, it's mostly circumstantial, and he has a pretty easy counter-argument for everything she brings up. And for a while, it does look like this could go either way. It seems entirely possible that Kaylee really is just as crazy as Tim was, and there is no haunted mirror. It's just that they're young minds were traumatized by the events and didn't know how to cope with it. But then shit starts hitting the fan and the mirror starts fucking with their minds and makes them see things that aren't really there and makes them do things that they forget about a few minutes later that they don't remember doing. The only reason they know they did them is because they have all the cameras set up and they can see the evidence. And that's when they finally realize, yes, they were right. This mirror is haunted and it's about to claim another victim. As far as the acting goes, uh, I thought that, that there's not a huge cast in this movie because it really just, for the most part, it's just a uh, focuses on the kids, both what, when they're young and when they're adults, and also the parents. Um, and uh, Kaylee and Tim are played respectively by uh, Karen Gillan of Doctor Who fame and Brenton Thwaites, who I'm not familiar with at all. Um, weird thing is that. Both of these characters that they play are American, and yet they're played by a Scot and an Aussie. And for what it's worth, I didn't realize Brenton Thwaites... Bleh, bleh, bleh. 
I'm having trouble saying his name. Brenton Thwaites was an Aussie until I looked on his IMDb profile after I saw the movie and it said he was from Australia. So, yeah, that... It, his American accent was pretty much dead on. And uh, Gillen's wasn't half bad either. Uh, it was a little bit weird hearing her speak in an American accent because I've been watching her speak in her normal voice for two and a half seasons worth of Doctor Who, but, you know, she did okay. Um... And there was nothing really wrong with her performances. Uh, I, I thought Thwaites did an especially good job as, um, when he actually comes to the realization that all the work he's done in the mental asylum was all for nothing. And in fact, he never was crazy. And all this, you know, these memories of the haunted mirror that he's been trying to suppress, this actually did happen. And, you know, when th that moment actually hits him, I think he spends the next... 10 minutes of the film just with this look of shock on his face and you can really see that that he just doesn't know how to cope with this and yeah it was a really strong performance from him i thought uh the parents are played by katie sackoff and rory cochran who also did a great job uh especially when the two of them start to be affected by the mirror and start going nuts and they both go nuts in different ways uh the dad pretty much just kind of crawls inside his own little shell and just becomes very quiet and very reserved and spends most of his time just sitting in his office staring at the mirror. Whereas the mom is the complete opposite of that. She just goes completely batshit insane and becomes very violent towards anything and everything, including herself. Very creepy performances on both counts. <laughs> they both did a really good job. And uh, the child actors that played the younger versions of Kaylee and Tim also did pretty good. Uh, Annalise Basso and Garrett Ryan. I'm not familiar with either, but you know what? It's always nice to see child actors who can actually, you know, act. Um, and the story was pretty good for the most part. Uh, really, the only thing that bothered me, and uh, this is something that I blame Paranormal Activity for because they fucking started it, is that Kaylee seemed to, at least at first, be more focused on, you know, trying to prove that the mirror is haunted and documenting all of this and getting it on video, when really their first priority should have been to just kill the fucking thing. And, and she does come up with a method that she thinks will work to kill it, but the fact that they don't try this right away and just, you know... I mean, it, it probably would have failed, but still, the fact that they didn't at least try it at first kind of bothered me. And, I mean, it, it probably would have failed, and when they try it later on, it does fail, because the mirror has a way of defending itself, since it, it gets inside people's minds and can make them see and do things that they wouldn't normally do. So anytime someone tries to strike the mirror, they miss. Even if they're standing at point-blank range, right in front of the mirror, they'll still somehow miss it completely and hit the wall because that's what the mirror does. And yeah, for the most part, it doesn't rely on jump scares or gore. There, there is one scene where there's a little bit of uh, blood that's a bit disturbing. It's a, it involves a light bulb, and that's all I will say for people who haven't seen it. If you have seen it, you know the scene I'm talking about. And oh, oh that was brutal. But um, yeah, for the most part, it... And, and there's like one jump scare like right at the beginning, but it, it's a very minor one and that's really it. For the most part, it just, you know, sets a creepy atmosphere and just lets the story play out. And it's, uh, it's basically trying to tell two different timelines at once because it jumps back and forth between the present day and the past when Kaylee and Tim were kids and watching their parents go insane. And towards the end, when the mirror really starts fucking with them, both timelines just kind of blend together. And I will say this is probably where the movie is going to start losing some people, because it does get very confusing here and very hard to follow. But it's confusing for all the right reasons. It's supposed to be a big, confusing mess, because that's what the mirror is trying to do. It's, we're watching two people go insane before our eyes. It's supposed to be that way. And... You know, when you consider that, it's actually done very well, at least in my opinion. Some people may not agree, that's fine, but, you know, for what it's worth, I thought it was very well done, and I definitely think it's worth seeing. Um, and it's, I believe it's still doing well enough that it should still be playing in most theaters at this point, so if you haven't seen it yet, and you like the horror movies that don't rely solely on jump scares and gore and just tell a creepy story, kind of like what The Conjuring did last year, I think it's definitely worth a watch. 
And in fact, another movie I found myself comparing it to, I don't think I'm the only person to make this comparison, but still it's a bit strange. It kind of reminded me of Blair Witch 2. But not in a bad way, because Blair Witch 2 was awful, and this was not, but it, it's... Basically, this is Blair Witch 2 done right. Because the story is much stronger, the acting... Well, the acting in Blair Witch 2 wasn't terrible, but it, it's, it's still better in this movie than it was in that. And most importantly, I gave a shit about these characters. The characters in Blair Witch 2 were horrible, horrible people, and I didn't give a damn if they died, or whatever the hell happened to them. And when the movie finally ended, I was just like, okay, is that it? Are we done? Can I go home now? Yeah, this one, I actually cared. I actually gave a shit at the end where something happened that I don't want to reveal, but let's just say it's, uh, it sets up the possibility for a sequel and leave it at that. But yeah, it was, it's Blair Witch 2 done right. And it's about time someone did that. Uh, and yeah, I think, let me double check my notes here, but I think that's all I have to say about this movie. Yep. Pretty much. And so now that I'm done talking about the movie, it's time for another Star Wars Mad Lib. Uh, since a lot of you seem to enjoy this last time, in fact, I got quite a few comments saying that the story we came up with was uh, better than the writing in most of the prequels. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so any case, let's see if we can duplicate that. Uh, I chose another story from the book at random, and this one is Boba Fett's Guide to Bounty Hunting. So let's see how this turns out. It was Luke Skywalker's destiny to follow in his father's toenail steps. That sounds painful. And the same can be said for the dark bounty hunter, Boba Fett. To be a bounty hunter, one must live by a few very sour rules. Ugh. <laughs> Always be ready to explode at the slightest sign of trouble. That's a very important lesson. You should always be prepared to explode. Have your jet rabbit on your back and your spaceship ready to take off at a moment's television. <laughs> you never know when you'll have to pursue a runaway milk. Those damn milks always running away. Don't ask too many fuckers. Don't ask those fuckers. Just, just, just don't. Just don't bother. You don't want to anger a boss like Jabba the Goose or Darth Buscemi. Someone needs to Photoshop that. <laughs> Darth Buscemi. Uh... Play it safe. Just keep your shoulders open and your neck shut. I don't know how you're going to do this, but where there's a will, there's a way. <laughs> keep your shoulders open and your neck shut, yes. Stay healthy. Get a perturbed night's sleep every night. Eat your green cities and get some shy exercise every day. Sleeping at night, eating green stuff, getting exercise. Did Hulk Hogan write this? <laughs> that way you'll always be ready for any notebooks the universe throws at you. Is this physical notebooks or is it like DVDs of the movie, the notebook? I don't know. Either way, it's a bad sign. So yeah, and that's Boba Fett's Guide to Bounty Hunting. I hope you enjoyed it. Till next time, take care. I've met my demons. I have many. I've seen. I've seen the devil. He is me.